All right, so we're going to be learning 19.3. We tried, but we didn't get to yesterday. So what are the key theorems about tangents to a circle? Well, let's take a look. That was the essential question. The tangent radius theorem. And so I told you vocabulary words are really important again. Tangent is a line, the same plane as a circle that intersects, blah, 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 right? So what that means is tangent is a line that touches the circle. And what's the point of tangency? The point where they touch. So let's see. A picture is actually so much easier, right? So there you go. This line, QP, uh-oh, this line QP is a tangent line. Tangent means you're just touching the circle, okay? And then point P is the point of tangency, okay? So maybe you need to write this down. There you go. This is the point of tangency. That means that is where the line is touching. It's not going through, it's just touching. And this, this line over here, this is, the, this is a tangent line. Okay, so that's what you have to know. And then what else do you have to know? Well, what else you had to know was if you have a radius from the circle like this, and then you have a tangent line, the angle over here is always going to be 90 degrees for both sides, always. And it doesn't even matter like where this um, line, tangent line is. For example, let's say you draw another line, and this time your point of tangency is right here. So you draw another line, and this line passes through, touches the circle. It's a tangent line, right? It touches this um, circle at point, not Q, because Q is already there, but let's say point R. Then same thing, the radius and the line of, uh, the tangent line is going to form a 90 degree angle, okay? So then the next thing you have to know by the way, that's called the tangent radius theorem. So go ahead and copy that as well. What that means is this is always going to be 90 degrees. Make sure you write all of these. All that stuff really helps out during the test. And of course, the converse, when we're talking about the converse of the tangent radius theorem, what we're basically saying is if this is 90 degrees, we have a radius and some line, right? Uh, it looks like it's touching it. And this is a 90 degree angle, then we know that this is a tangent line, okay? All right. And then, you know, you have to prove it and all that stuff, but that's not really important to me, okay? So you just have to know that. And then we tried to watch the video over here. We have two tangent lines, okay? And all we had to do was understand that they measure the same. So then, we have to try and understand why they measure the same though. So I'm going to see if there's like a better picture for me to use. There you go. But before we move on to that, I need you to copy this as well. The circumscribed angle theorem. What that means is, see, you see how you have a point outside of the circle. And then we have two tangent lines, right? So then this this angle over here, that is a circumscribed angle, okay? So then the circumscribed angle theorem states that if you were to draw a line, this is a tangent line, this is a tangent line, okay? We already know that these two are 90 degree angles, right? Because they are both tangent lines, right? So then this is a quadrilateral and all quadrilaterals, right? Because qu quadrilateral means, you know, a shape with four sides. And um, the interior angles always add up to be, what, 360 degrees. But then you see we already have two 90-degree angles. So if you subtract 180, what do you get? You get another 180 degrees. So basically, the circumscribed angle theorem states that if you add the circumscribed angle and then this angle over here, and that is the associated central angle, when you add them together, you would always get 180 degrees. They are supplementary, okay? So you get that? If you have a circumscribed angle, okay, that's a point outside the circle, and then you have two tangent lines, that's the angle, right? If you go that, plus this is going to be 180, because these two are already 
90 degrees each and so I really like this diagram here and I want to go ahead and explain to you something really important okay so so then earlier we talked about how this side and that side measure the same right so if you go back let me see no not that one where am I never mind I can't find it but anyway we talked about earlier how okay this side and that side measure the same right uh, in the earlier video so I just wanted to go ahead and demonstrate that to you so first of all what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and create my quadrilateral and then I'm going to go ahead and connect this line over here because I want to create a triangle okay so then we already know that these two angles are 90 degrees because of the um, radius tangent theorem right but then that's not really important we have two triangles here and what we know is that these two are right triangles okay and so then uh, what else do we know we know that this red line is going to be the same length for this triangle and that triangle and that's the hypotenuse another thing we know is that these two measure the same because they're both the radius of the circle so if you use the Pythagorean theorem we can use common sense and we can figure out that this line over here is also congruent to the other side okay so that's why um, in the earlier question they said this side is 5x units long and this side is like 7x plus something and you could figure out how long they are because these two sides are supposed to be congruent to each other okay so I want you to keep this in mind when you have a circumscribed angle like this you can actually go ahead and create a quadrilateral we know that these two angles are already um, 90 and 90 so that's 180 so the circumscribed uh, angle theorem states that this angle over here which is the circumscribed uh, angle plus this angle over here is 180 but in addition to that I just want you to remember that because these two triangles are congruent to each other because of the HL congruence theorem we also know that this side and that side measure the same and that these are 90 degrees and all that other stuff okay so those are just additional things that you have to know in order to be successful um, in this unit okay so then I think that was it yes so we're gonna go straight into the evaluate section and there are many questions that I want you to be able to solve as you can see so obviously number th uh, okay number four Uh, number four, five. Let me go back. Number four, five. Number four, five. Eight, nine, ten. I think I need to write this down because I'm going to forget. Four, five, eight, nine, ten. And then, of course, let me see what else. 13, 14, 15, 13 through 16. And I think that's good enough, right? Ooh, I want you to know that too, but, you know, it's okay if you don't get it. Maybe I'll just stick in an 18 as well, okay? So those are the questions I want you to be able to do. But let me see if I can go over some, some of them. For example, question number four. This is a very easy question. Why is this marked wrong here? Okay. Anyhow. It, oh, I already put in the answers over here because it's a check mark. But anyway, in the figure, RQ is tangent to circle P at point Q. What is the measure of? PRQ so PRQ is this angle over here this is obvious this is 90 degrees because of the uh, tangent radius uh, theorem right so if this is 61 how big is that going to be when you add all three angles it needs to be 180 so 61 plus 90 plus X which is a black dot is going to be 180 so when you add these two together it's going to be 151 plus X that's 180 so you're going to subtract 151 from both sides and you're going to get x is equal to and then 7 minus 5 is 2 29 degrees and that's my answer right here
All right, so now let's move on to another question, something more difficult. Because question number five is um, exactly, ooh, is not exactly the same thing. It's a little bit more difficult. So let's do this one, okay? And yeah, it says that I got it wrong. It says the International Space Station orbits Earth at an altitude of about 240 miles. So if this is the Earth, okay, this over here is going to be 240 miles. Okay, but then in the diagram, the space station is at point E. There you go. The radius of the Earth is approximately 3,960 miles. So I know that you see 4,000 miles here, but you gotta um, not think about that, okay? You gotta think, uh, use 3,960. I have no idea why this is wrong. That's why I got my answer wrong, okay? Because I was looking at 4,000 and not using 3,960. And then it says to the nearest 10 miles, what is EH? So what do you have to find? You gotta find the length of? EH, this one right here. All right, so obviously we know that this is 90 degrees, so this is a right triangle. We know that the length of this is 3,960. So let's use common sense. How long do you think this is? The same thing, 3,960, because that's the radius of the circle, right? In other words, I have a right triangle that looks like this, and I need to find out how long this is. I know this side is 3,960, and this side is going to be 3,960 plus 240. So let's add that together. Uh... So that's going to be 4,200, right? So then now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, right? So let's use the Pythagorean theorem. which is leg squared plus leg squared equals hypo squared, right? So let's do it. This is the leg and that is the other leg. So 3960 squared plus x squared equals 4200 squared, okay? I'm going to need my handy dandy calculator for this. I'm trying to find it. So 3960 squared is going to be, wow, that's a big number. 1568160 plus x squared equals, then I gotta do 4200 squared, right? Oops, 4200 squared. And that gives me, ooh, wow, 17640000. So then we're going to subtract this number from both sides. I don't wanna rewrite it, so I'm just gonna do it, okay? So that minus, gosh, 39.60 squared. And so my answer is, no, not really. So this one is going to be 1958400. Then obviously we don't want to find out what x squared is, right? We've got to find out what x is equal to. So we have to find the square root of both sides. And when we do that, we'll get x equals... Well, let's figure it out. The square root of the answer. That gives me 1399.428455. That's what it says in my calculator. But it says to the nearest 10 miles. What that means is we're not using any of those numbers. We're not even using this number. I have to cut it off over here at nearest 10. So then the number after the 9 is a 9. So I have to add 1 here. So 9 plus 1 is 10. There you go. So what is my answer? x equals 140 miles. OK? So then I can now put 140 miles. Can I? It won't let me because they already marked me wrong, I think. All right, so now let's move on to the next question. And the next one I told you to do was question number eight. Why aren't you letting me click on anything? Okay, so it's not letting me do anything. So I'm going to stop my lesson here because I actually want to go over more questions with you but my screen is not working for me. So what I'm gonna do instead right now is I'm going to go ahead and get, write down all the questions that you need to study for the test, obviously. Number four, five, eight, nine, 
13 through 16 and 18, okay? And that is for module, which module are we on? I think it's 19.3, okay? So I only did, I think, 4 and 5 with you, but then the rest, we'll try and work on them together in the classroom, okay? So happy learning.